We are at uh, 421 uh, North Main Street, a uh, recently renovated house that uh, pretty much anybody around here has been going by for a long period of time hoping uh, that somebody would fall in love with it. Well actually, um, Javier Blanco and his uh, wife uh, Clarabee and um, a relative I know Gomez uh, had recently in the last few years fixed up a number of other houses in town but mostly there were uh, houses that had been built in the uh, 40s, uh, 60s, or even the 80s but just needed some modernization and, uh, and uh, sprucing up. This house of course is a lot older and in need of a lot more love but and they and they fall in love with it. Now obviously it was uh, for a uh, investment opportunity as well because there's a lot next door that they subdivided uh, but it, it's a labor of love. The house sits on North Main Street that is one of the oldest trails in the state of New Jersey. It was a Minisink trail for the Minisink Indians and they traveled this trail for centuries as would have it with a lot of the old Indian trails when the white man came and settled they used the trails and converted them into uh, roads for horses, carriages, etc. So after centuries of it being used and by the Minisink Indians as a Minisink trail, um, the uh, European settlers uh, named it uh, the Duke of York Trail. So we of course know part of York Roads all over the place, but it was first the Duke of York Road. So it's a very, very uh, historic road that this house sits on. The house itself was built in the 1870s on the corner of the road that went to Wyckoff's Mills. That road is called Wyckoff's Mills Road. And I always tell people or suggest you close your eyes and you pretend the bypass isn't there and you pretend the New Jersey Turnpike's not there. This road meandered around around old trees and a little swampy ground, etc. So it wasn't a straight shot uh, to go 1.6, 1.7 miles to Wyckoff's Mills. Everybody's familiar with the Heights Down was built around a mill that was built at the uh, Rocky Brook. Uh, and Etra, you know, was Milford, you know, had a mill there. But a lot have forgotten that there was a big, very successful mill out this road 1.7 miles away at Wyckoff's Mills. It is um, where you would go down Probasco Road at the furthest northeast, uh, northwest corner of Twin Rivers and there's a bridge that goes over the Millstone River and that is where Wyckoff's Mills uh, was. This has a mixture of architecture. We don't know exactly the year that it was built, but I said 1871 because there was an article in the Heightstown Gazette that talks about sort of like a social note and the Hunt's new house uh, on North Main Street is being painted. Well, new relatives, so it could have been 1870, could, could have been 1872, but we'll use 1871. Its architectural style is called Victorian by people, but really it's more Second Empire and East Lake style. Mansard roof, you know, which is the East Lake style, and the Second Empire, which is the, the, the boxy with the overhangs and the box gutters and the large windows. It was built by uh, Elston Hunt. Most people call this the Wyckoff House, even though it's really the Hunt House, since Hunt is the one who built the house. Uh, and he was a, a mayor of Heightstown. Hunt actually ran on the party that was called the No License Party. Uh, no license meaning they didn't want to grant any liquor licenses to any of the taverns in town. This was a constant battle during that uh, a latter part of the 19th century, Civil War, pre-Civil War through the end of the uh, century as regards to how many inns, how many were going to be allowed to serve liquor, etc. because most of it, the licensing was done uh, locally. So he ran as a, no, a member of the No License Party, which was a 100% temperance anti-alcohol policy. So Wyckoff's Mills was almost the dividing line at one point between the borough and the township as the house across the street, the Applegate's house, uh, was in the township when this house remained in the in the borough. This house sat on a much larger parcel from this property all the way over to William Street 
was a large piece that was owned by a family named Poland, which was subdivided off into the many lots you see from here towards Heightstown. This, this whole area of the Heightstown uh, was generally called to, uh, referred to as, by locals as Canada. Well, I'd heard that as a kid and I always thought this was because this is the north side of town, Canada, but it actually wasn't. Uh, most of the land from the Rocky Brook all the way here and north was owned by a fellow named Reed, R-E-E-D, and of course a lot of us have heard the, of the Reed House, and there's a Reed Street, uh, but he raised uh, ponies that were called Canadian ponies. So since he had all these ponies running around that were Canada ponies, it, it was referred to as Canada. And uh, the Historical Society is very excited uh, with what Javier has uh, been able to do with the house, and we look forward to uh, a loving owner sometime near in the future. So here we are uh, in, this, in this beautiful old house, which uh, used to be uh, really a fixture of all architecture in Heistown, and we're very glad Amino Gomez and my friend Javier uh, Black, well, we did all this, and when we first walked into this house, there was a big wall here, and the floors had holes, and we knew about the historical value of this home, and we knew that the people in town, and not only in town, but in the entire county, wanted to keep this uh, structure standing. So finally, we brought in an architect, and I remember what he said when he came in through that door. He said, he's got good bones. He's got good bones. I'm not an architect, and Javier is not an architect. And right there, the decision was to keep the structure the way it was. There were walls here all over the place. As you know, this house is over 100 years old, so the rooms used to be a lot smaller. And we decided to open up the space and make it an open floor plan, which is very desirable today. My friend here is the master at uh, Crown Moldings. They used to be a very, very wide uh, plaster crown moldings that we couldn't save. It was impossible to save it. But we saved everything else. But if you look at the baseboard, if you look at the moldings, even the hardware, everything is original uh, from this house. So we have taken really, really every step possible to keep it as much, uh, or looking as much as the original structure as possible. This chandelier that you see right here was the what in the state sale in one of the old houses in Park Avenue in New York City. Uh, and a lot of the other lamps around the house and the chandeliers were saved from the original structure. All right, we were talking about the windows before. We replicated with cedar. This is all cedar right here. And this, every single one of these panels was cut with a jigsaw and assembled. We really think that, that it goes with the architecture of the house and the old feeling, the old 100 years ago. But it really plays together in a perfect, perfect way. Uh, our first uh, visit to the house, uh, there's some things that call our attention and one of them was uh, the staircase. A piano must have fallen through the staircase mm -hmm. right here because all of the, the steps were broken. And uh, we spent, what, two weekends uh, fixing this, this stair, but as you can see, three, three weekends <laughs> we, we spent really, really, really paying attention to the way everything was. So, the spindles right here, a lot of them were restored uh, and really reproduced to uh, identical copies of what the originals looked like. Now, before I used to try to move this, I used to go from one side to the other, and as you can see, everything is solid as solid as it was a hundred years ago. All the lamps are original, most of them at least. Uh, we try to restore them, a lot of them are brass, but we try our best to, like we said before, to keep uh, very good attention to detail and using photographs of the past. The stained glass in the back uh, is a very beautiful piece. We have to still, I think that's the only place in the house that we still have to do some work on. It's been here since the house was built more than 100 years ago. It's just taken, uh, taken us a lot of effort, a lot of time, but we certainly uh, feel that it's worth it.
this is another room. It used to be a bedroom, and since the house has uh, so many bedrooms, uh, we decided to do something spectacular. I spent hours and hours and hours researching to find the, you know, the, the specific items, choosing the light, choosing the mirror, choosing everything that goes together. The idea was to uh, find a, a freestand top um, that go with the house, uh, like the old ones. You can uh, have jets, uh, have water, lights. Uh, it's sort of like entertaining. I would love to be a newlywed and just be here in this beautiful jacuzzi with a bottle of champagne. Just imagine yourself just sitting in this beautiful, but I will never get out of here. I will spend most of the day right here in this room. Wouldn't you? No with you. <laughs> this used to be four bedrooms when we took one bedroom and, and turned it into a, a half bathroom with the possibility of adding uh, to it and making it a full bathroom. There's also connections for uh, washing and dryer up here and large storage rooms. Uh, two of these large bedrooms have walk-in closets and they can be turned into maybe an office, maybe a game room for young kids, a, a mother-daughter type of situation. It's a very, very uh, planned restoration of an old home that certainly deserves to be uh, to be standing not only now for, for for the next hundred years, the next hundred and fifty years. <laughs>